The running has been a game changer for body composition wise. It, it's allowed me to stay lean and eat a lot more. You did mention that you're a fan of like cheat meals and cheat days. I think you just need that mental break if you want to continue to keep digging and getting leaner. You can't just dig, 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 dig and not have any fun. As bodybuilders, you don't think about hydration. Running forced me to learn about mm -hmm. hydration. What are some things you learned from powerlifting? You need to get stronger. As a natural, if you're not getting stronger, your physique is not gonna change over the years. And how do you help some of these individuals who are like maybe kind of starting almost at square one? I'm always gonna prescribe higher calories. Every new lifter should dirty bowl. Feel how strong you get, how fat you get, and you jump out of the shower, you don't even wanna look at yourself. <laughs> that's, a, that's a good dirty bulk. Good workout today, that was awesome. It's always good having a, a bodybuilder in here. Yep. But you've been doing, uh, we're recording, right? Yep. You've been doing, uh, you've been switching over to some running. What have been some things that have, has anything kind of gotten in your way or you've transitioned over into running and it's not too bad? It transitioned pretty smooth, man, besides the, uh, the knee pain, mm. right? But focusing more on uh, technique really helped. But the running has been a game changer for body composition wise. I found that gray area where I can eat a lot more. And Seema knows. Yeah. Right? Like, you either eating, you're either in a nice deficit, starving yourself, yeah. or you're in the off-season bulking, right? Yeah. But, like, with the running, it, it's allowed me to stay lean and eat a lot more. Dude, before running, did you find it, was it hard? Like, did you really have to try to stay lean? Yeah, I did. And now you don't find that you're not really needing to try because of the running? Because I can eat a lot more. Yeah. yeah. I'm a fat kid at heart. Like, Same. I like to eat, man. Same. Like, portion-wise. Like, <laughs> I, I don't go to In-N-Out and have a cute little double-double. <laughs> if I can have three. Mm. Three double-doubles or, like, two three-by-threes, a milkshake, fries. That's how I like to eat. Oh, that's good. That's how I like to eat. That's good. You like to get after it with the food. Yeah. yeah I wonder why that's such a big problem. Uh, I mean... I guess girls are like shamed and they <laughs> it's kind of harder for them just to eat the way that we eat as men. But as men, it seems like a lot of guys like to just really fucking get after it when it comes to the food. It's the muscle. I asked my wife, I'm like, you, you can be with a guy that eats like a, a hamburger and, and a water or you want to be with a guy with three double doubles and a milkshake. <laughs> She's like. The, the, the guy with three double doubles, right? Also, you, don't wanna, you don't wanna eat the same as your, your girl. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, your wife was the first Miss Bikini Olympia, right? In the NPC. Yeah, the IFBB, yeah. IFBB. Yeah, yeah. Yo, that's crazy, dude. 2010. That's wild. The first ever. Mm -hmm. And she kicks your ass in running. Yeah, I was telling him <laughs> that, that she's demoralizing. She's that, been like. running for 10 years and I always hated running. Oh, shit. So she would always go out for runs, and she was, I'm like, how, how many miles are you running? I'm like, she'd be like, four. I'm like, fuck, I can't even run one, you know? <laughs> yeah. And then finally, I, I, we moved to Vegas, and it's like always hot over there, and everybody's just running with their shirts off. I'm like, I'm going to try. I'm going to try one, one mile. I was dying. <laughs> and then I started doing my own research and like on form and technique, how to just run better. And I just started nerding out and just getting obsessed with getting better. Mm. And then finally, I caught up. I was like, oh, I got, I'll run with you. I was ready. Yeah, once you can run beyond about 15 to 20 minutes straight, mm. then it starts to click over, and then you get obsessed with it, and then you, a lot of people end up uh, running a little too much. And did you get into that? Did you run into, like, wanting to run every day and uh, maybe just overdoing it? I did. I more got, like, into the, the zone of buying shoes. <laughs> like, <laughs> I have this rack of running shoes. But like it, it works out because I've always been like a shoe whore, right? Buying say. shoes with all kinds of different colorways, but like they would just sit in the closet. We got any uh, stuff we can pull up? Is some of that on YouTube? Uh, no. Oh man, I would just flash that stuff on my story mm -hmm. on on Instagram. Mm -hmm. But the cool thing about running shoes is you actually use them, right? I look at them yeah. as like tires, right? Like there's there's a mileage that you hit and you got to retire them, and then there's like a rotation. When you rotate them, you're actually using them for different runs. Right. So it's like a good way to justify spending that money on the shoes. <laughs> Quick question. What's the average mileage on a running shoe? I would say like 250, 300, depending on the type of shoe. So you use it for like 100 and get rid of it, huh? No. Oh, you, actually, like, use, you actually put it through its paces? Yeah. Because <laughs> I'm like, you probably want to get new shoes. Yeah, yeah. No, no. I actually put them through. <laughs> okay, okay. But like the super shoes. Mark runs in a lot of super shoes. Yeah. This guy's meathead millionaire. Just like, I'm like, he's running in some Vaporfly 3s or Alpha Fly 2s and he's just putting miles on them. Like most people don't do that because uh, they're like, uh, 
two hundred eighty dollars, three hundred dollars, right? right? right. Mm-hmm. But like I started doing the same, but then I I started um, realizing that it was I was kind of not cheating, but like it was <laughs> when I got to the like races, like I would have no extra help because I was so used to training in right. a super shoe. Mm. So I wanted to make it a little harder, so I changed like my rotation and shoes. For have people more. have no idea what we're talking about. Yeah, there's no. shoes that are called <clears throat> super shoes. I think Nike was the first one to kind of break through with the shoes, and it's a carbon fiber foot plate and the carbon fiber foot plate uh will literally like spring you and kind of launch you forward in terms of shoes in my opinion they're not the they're not the best shoes because they don't like i don't know they don't fit great they don't feel great i've tried a variety of sh- of uh carbon fiber foot plate shoes and a lot of them just are kind of snug on the feet uh, they don't feel amazing but to go out for a 45 minute run or an hour run in some of these shoes uh, they really do feel like they help kind of launch you forward and propel you forward. When I first got into running, I asked um, I asked somebody that uh, has run a ton of marathons. I asked him like, "Hey, you know, what shoe should I get?" And the guy was like, "At your size, like you're pretty big, so you should get uh, a super shoe and just running that all the time." And that's interesting information because people say that you should try to switch your shoes up and stuff like that. But his point was. Any volume for you at this point is going to be a lot of volume and uh, with a heavier body, just kind of landing over and over again, uh, I needed all the assistance I can get. So it was a good place to start for me. What's, what's your favorite shoe? Um, I still love the, those Nikes, the Nike, the, Nike Alpha Fly. The Alpha Fly? What about the Adidas ones? I haven't ones? found anything that matches that. The Adidas ones? Those wide? Yeah, I have Adidas ones that are a little wider. I have uh, some New Balance <laughs> ones that are a little wider and they're nice, but... I haven't found, they've just, I don't know. Probably Nike's got some sort of like voodoo thing over me since I always loved Bo Jackson and uh, Michael Jordan and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah. So they probably have some sort of like uh, spell over me or whatever. But marketing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's better. feels like it's superior in some way. But Mm -hmm. I don't know. Yeah. When you first started running and like just like with your background in bodybuilding and stuff, was it like a hard transition over to like eating more or were you just like, fuck it, let's keep going? Eating more was was a blessing, man. Yeah, like it 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 made it so much easier, so much easier. Mm-hmm. Yeah. How about like the actual like performance aspect of it? Getting used to running. What are some of the things that you had to learn how to do to become start becoming a better runner? Getting up early. Oh, waking up before it got hot. Because in Vegas, oh, uh, by like during the summertime, by like eight o'clock, nine o'clock, it was like ninety degrees. And then it would hit like 105, 110. Mm-hmm. But then I started getting my, my David Goggins on. I was like, fuck, I'm going to make it harder. I want to run at the peak of the heat. He's going to carry the boats. <laughs> He's going to carry the boats. <laughs> when the UV rays were like 10. And that's when I got dark as hell. Like I didn't, I usually tan. I, I fake bake in, in, in the beds like during the wintertime. This is my, my me head bodybuilder thing. I like to stay even, right? No tan lines. Oh, there you go. That's, oh, that's, right. that's natty UV rays right there. <laughs> <laughs> that's straight from the sun, but then I had like that's uh, great. the uh, the Daisy Duke tan line like mm-hmm. on the shorts, on the quads. But wow. Have you noticed any negative impacts on muscle or anything you need to do? You need to like work a little bit harder to maintain a certain amount of muscle or what are you noticing? I think I definitely had to. I'm smaller. Like, like I get trolled on it. Like, you're not as big as like, fight, like back when, when, when we took that picture at the campus. Right. <laughs> but then again, I was lifting a lot more. Now I, I'm training four days a week. You mm-hmm. know, I have three kids at home now. It's like, I can't live at the gym and I don't have my gym to like live at anymore. So I train at a commercial gym where I kind of, we go for two hours, we're in and out and there's no extra, you know, credit. And I just go home. So I, I, I definitely don't train as much as I, I used to when I had my, uh, my gym. Yeah. I want to switch gears for a second. We'll talk about your gym and all that stuff in a minute. But you did mention we were uh, out there lifting some weights and we were filming some stuff. And you did mention that you're a fan of like cheat meals and cheat days. Mm-hmm. And I think Andrew's ears are perking up over there. And I think everybody listening is like, wait a second, what? Like these assholes on the Power Project always tell me that I'm fucking fat and that I can't eat. You know, I can't have a cheat meal or can't have a break here and there. What are some of your thoughts on a cheat meal or a cheat day? I think if you're you're not in contest prep, you know, I think it's 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 good to be looser, right? While, while still being in the deficit during the week. Like I told you, 6 days a week I'm still tracking macros, I'm still in a deficit, I'm still 
seeing the scale go down. And then that Sunday fun day, I'm getting more calories in, majority from carbs and probably fat and proteins lower. But I think you just need that mental break if you want to continue to keep digging and getting leaner. Mm. You can't just dig, 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 dig and not have any any fun. On a day like that, is that for you, is it anything goes? Or if, when you do it for a client, is it anything goes? Or you try, try to put some uh, restrictions on it so it doesn't get too crazy? For my clients, they're, they're more controlled. I'll tell them, you know, 300, 300 more carbs, you know, maybe 10, 15 more fat just to be able to play with the numbers. But for myself, it's somewhat controlled and strategic where I'll fast. I'll, I'll continue to fast majority of the day. And then I'll fit in all the shit that I was craving during the week that I really didn't want to fit in. I right. Keep it just a little closer to the microphone. Sorry about that. Like uh, donuts. You know, like I wouldn't fit in donuts during the week just because it, it, it would leave me hungry still. Because I don't want one donut. I want like six. <laughs> <laughs> but I'll literally have that on that Sunday fun day mm-hmm. if I could have it. If I, if I could, if I was craving it. But I mean, the controlled refeeds, there's, there's a time and place for them. There's a time and place for the, the cheat days too. But the one thing is the leaner you get, the more fun you can have. Mm. What but, do you mean when you say that? The leaner you get, the, you can just have more, more food, more, more, more fun with the, the cheat days. That's a little bit okay. of a curse sometimes, though, too, right? Because if you cheat <laughs> and the next day you wake up and you're all veiny and shredded, mm. yeah. you're like, I got this. And then you fuck up again and <laughs> again. And <then> like, <laughs> That's where the discipline comes into play. Yeah, like right. You have to get back on it. You can't just keep doing it. Because <laughs> right. then that, def, that surplus just keeps adding up. Right. And then, boom, the scale's going up. The one thing that people miss about that, too, is like, you know, because when, when I was working with bodybuilders and I was working with bikini athletes, binges would happen. Like a, a, a binge would happen. And I'd make sure that an athlete felt comfortable telling me when this happened because sometimes athletes do not tell you when they binge. Mm-hmm. And then you see the scales up three pounds on average. You're like, what happened? Nothing. Like, nah, bitch. <laughs> right? But the thing is, is like, if it's one binge on one day, right? Naturally, for the next few days, without you realizing it, you're going to be moving a little bit more. Your workouts are going to be a little bit more effective. You're going to be, you're going to be expending a bit more calories. So it's not like that one binge is going to put you in the shitter. It's when that one binge turns into a three-day experience. Mm-hmm. Now we have a lot of work to fucking do. Now like it, it gets bad. But one day can actually be extremely effective on helping you have a productive week if you're smart about it. Yeah. Yeah, it's all numbers. That one day is not going to put you over, but it's going to have you feeling good. You know, you're going to be doing a little bit more weight, yeah. a little bit more reps. Every, every your performance is going to increase. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then you're also somebody that uh, likes to, or maybe doesn't like to, but you adhere to tracking, mm-hmm. and uh, you're going to allow yourself maybe a little bit more freedom even during the week. But you're still going to be in a caloric deficit, so some people might miss that when they're trying to pay attention to what you're doing. They might say, oh, I saw him eating like crazy on Sunday. Yeah. And then now I see him on Tuesday. He's kind of enjoying, you know, just whatever it might be that you might track. Uh, and so they might get kind of confused by that. But you, as you were mentioning earlier, uh, it's controlled. It's, a, it's not necessarily like a cheat all the time. Sometimes it's literally like a refeed where you're just giving yourself more nutrients, giving yourself more carbohydrates. Mm-hmm. That's what you're doing sometimes? Yeah, most of the time. Yeah. Well, so is it like, um, I mean, is is one aspect of like a quote refeed day or a, a cheat day, cheat meal? Well, f- first off, yeah, is it a cheat meal or cheat day? And then the other part is like how much of that is just like a mental break from the like, I got to be in a deficit. And it's like, oh, like, like you hear people say, like, oh, I got to go on a diet. Life sucks. But then it's like, well, no, here, here's this little cheat meal <laughs> that you get to enjoy for a second. I think it helps a lot mentally. Mm-hmm. I think it's, it's something to look forward to at the end of the week if it's Sunday, you know what I mean? Um, but I think physically it helps a lot more than oh, okay. than mental. Mm-hmm. And then how, like, is it literally all day or is it just like you can have like a meal? I know you said 300 uh, extra like carbs and stuff, but do you tell people to have it throughout the day or just kind of let them figure it out? It, it's really up to them, okay. you know, as long as they hit their numbers. But if they want to save it for later, you yeah. know, for that 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 date, that hot date, where they're getting sushi, then mm. do it mm-hmm. that way. So l- let's talk about this a little bit because, like, I mean, I've tracked a lot before. I don't track as much anymore because, like, I learned from tracking. So, like, now I can kind of just eat. I know when I'm full. I know how much protein I need to eat. It, it's it's fine. You've always been a monster, though. Like, uh, eating wise, like you you're, you you eating wise, to, yeah. You were you were able to cut. You're like you're you're cutting macros were like 
my bulking macros. Yeah, but I was also mm -hmm. heavier. Yeah. Like in my, I think when I was, when I had to prep at 230, when I was at my lowest, I had to eat 40 grams of fat. My carbs were at 250. My protein was at 250. But that was at 2.30. Like, I, I, felt, I just felt like shit. You know what I mean? But the, the, the thing I wonder is with tracking your macros, because a lot of people, when they think about tracking your macros, like, I saw Kenny was, like, having trouble in there because he likes to have structured food. And when he thinks about tracking macros, he thinks it's just, like, people eating bullshit mm -hmm. trying to, like, you know, uh, hit a number. But y there's, there's an even aspect of whole foods and adding food that makes you feel kind of good. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah. The, the micro, the micronutrients is a, a big part of it, right? Like, like how healthy, if, if that's important to you, mm. health as a whole, you can't just be eating pop tarts, hitting your carbs or mm. eating fucking Snickers, you know, all day to hit your macros. Uh -oh. It'll catch up to you. Yeah. So how do you do it? Like what, what, what is your daily, like what kind of foods do you eat? Oh, I know it's a general question, but eggs, um, Protein wise, chicken. Lately, we've been eating a lot of salmon. Like straight up, Sonia's been going to the grocery store and just getting a, a fillet of salmon, and mm -hmm. we've just been eating it raw, white rice, soy sauce. Boom. Mm -hmm. Whoa, you can do what? What kind of store? Like you, you can do that with just normal store salmon, or do you? Like, we, Sam's Club. Like I think Whoa. even Costco salmon, you can do that raw. We've been doing that. It's all the same shit. I, but, I think. But is it sushi grade? I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't it have to be sushi grade? I, though? I'm still alive. No, I, I see. I think that's the whole thing, like, organic, right? Right? Like, are you paying extra money for organic? Mm. Like, what makes it sushi grade? I don't know. The freshness? I don't know. I just, yeah. I'm just, I'm just. <laughs> it's fresh. It's fresh. Okay. Yeah. All right. It's fresh enough that I don't have a fucking stomach ache that, like an hour later. Mm. Maybe I got to try that. Try oh, it. Oh, man. Okay. Sounds delicious. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing a lot of salmon, man. I've been feeling the real, real good. Mm. The extra fats, I'm assuming, maybe? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So what's your uh, macro breakdown right now then? Uh, 450, um, 450 carb, 100 fat, or 100 fat, about 175, 185 protein. 450 carb. That's awesome, dude. Mm -hmm. They're running, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good amount, good amount of fuel. When you're, uh, when you're running, uh, have you noticed that you have to fuel differently than when you were bodybuilding or does it feel similar? It's pretty similar. I think I, I plan a little bit more strategic around my, my training. Like I have to have a good pre-workout meal a couple hours before, um, and then post. If if I don't, then because I I'll run in the morning, and then go go to the gym after. If if I don't have enough, I'm just empty. Mm. Can't get a pump, just flat as fuck during training. Mm -hmm. So that's and then hydration came into play. Like I was I would come into training. I'm like, why am I so flat? Is it you know I'm running too much? But then I started doing research on hydration. That just opened my eyes. As bodybuilders, you don't think about hydration running forced me to learn about mm -hmm. hydration you know electrolytes i never cared about salt you know i always i've never been a bodybuilder to cut salt i always believed as a natural you need you need sodium you do right yeah. but it it came even harder to me when i started doing the running how important key it was yeah it's interesting with bodybuilding even though there is a performance like you do have to train hard uh, very consistently you know four or five days a week um it just doesn't seem to require a crazy amount of fuel like you can do it in a caloric deficit and but if you start doing other stuff in a caloric deficit where you start lifting and doing something else in a caloric deficit you'll feel like dog shit mm -hmm. and then you get to eat more <laughs> right get to bring your calories back up all right, Roger family, it's time to step up your barefoot shoe game. Now, we talk about foot health all the time on the podcast, but the winter months are coming, and Vivo's come out with some slick boots. These are their Gobi boots, and they have different colors on their website. Now, these have a wide toe box. They are flat, and they are flexible, and they are stylish and sexy <laughs> as boots. But obviously, Vivo is awesome because they not only have boots and casual shoes like their Novus right here, which, again, wide, flat, flexible so that your foot can do what it needs to do within the shoe and you're getting the benefit of having your feet improve while you're walking around in shoes but they also have shoes for the gym like their modus again flat flexible wide toe box along with their primus light threes and all the classics that you know they also have shoes for running and trail running on their website so again for all barefoot type shoes vivo is your one-stop shop for pretty much all the types of kicks you need andrew how can they get it 
Yes, that's over at vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject, where for the entire month of December, but December only, you guys will receive 20% off your very own Vivo Barefoot shoes. Again, vivobarefoot.com slash powerproject, links in the description, as well as the podcast show notes. How did the uh, online coach thing kind of come to be? Because you've been that for a really long time, and, and you've been coaching people for a long ass time now and you've been yeah. in bodybuilding for a long time. Um, what made you come up with such a simple name? It was just as simple as like, I asked myself, Instagram popped up and I had to think of a, a profile name. I was like, what the fuck am I doing right now? And it was online coaching. There really wasn't like a, a name for what I was doing. It was just as simple as I was like, I'm coaching people online. Right? Yeah, I think it's great. Cause like, you know, now you see like knees over toes and there's a lot of other like literal uh, names that go along with what someone's selling or what someone does. And uh, you were, to my knowledge, one of the first that I saw that kind of did something like that. Yeah. When, when did Instagram come? 2010? Yeah. 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 So my brother made me start a profile and he was like, start a profile. I'm like, I don't want to do another freaking social media thing because I think I was Facebook. What else was out there? Twitter. Was Twitter already out there? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so YouTube I'll, was out there too, mm-hmm. but it was super early, right? Or no? Yeah, yeah YouTube. YouTube was there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. YouTube's two thousand like six or so mm-hmm. seven. No, I was on Body Space. Do you guys remember Body Space? <laughs> I don't. I was in That's meathead stuff right there. Mm. Bodybuilding.com had a by the way a, a Ray, platform. How old are you? I, I just turned forty. Dude, good Dude. enough. Good for you. Yeah. You fucking look twenty five. <laughs> I, I feel about thirty. Look incredible. Yeah. <laughs> I feel about thirty with a little bit more money. <laughs> there we go. More kids. There we go. All right, body space. Yeah. So body space was like my space for meatheads, for bodybuilders. <laughs> Bodybuilding.com's platform. So there's this like top six thing where you like try to build your profile and then you'd like land top six. And there was always this guy, what was his name? He was so shredded. Um dang. there was a guy that he's Nick. It was Nick. Something he was he stayed super shredded and he always had that top spot. But okay. I was posting on there. I think I was prepping for my first show and I was just posting progress pics and like what I was eating, just sharing. And then like my page started growing right there. And then Instagram came came out and then I, oh, actually I got clients from uh, the body space. People mm. would ask me like, hey, how much do you charge for a meal plan? I'm like, I don't charge anything. So I was doing it for free for a good while, just yeah. helping people out. And then people just, it started snowballing where they're like, you know, what do you charge for a, a 12 week prep? I'm like, just made some price up on this, this, and then it just started growing from there. Mm. Nice. Yeah, and uh, it's been a while since you uh, hit up anything on YouTube. Yeah, I think two, three years. Um, did that kind of coincide with you uh, selling your gym and stuff like that? or It just got, I was just burnt out, man. I think mm. that for a good year, I was posting like, like daily vlogs. It was just oh, nutty. Shit. Like, I was always on YouTube posting. Um, I just got burnt out. And I think at the time, like, the the CPM, it was just so shitty. Like, I was posting, like, four or five videos a week and just getting paid like shit. Mm. I'm like, oh. and I just had to make a decision. I just, I, I think I didn't post for, like, a, a week, and I just got so used to it. Mm. Mm-hmm. Got a little break not having my camera. It's just, like, it, it gets old. Like, having having a camera, thinking about content, like, being with the family, it just, like, it just added up. Right. Yeah, there's nothing, uh, nothing quite like being with your family, and it feels weird yeah. to sometimes have a phone with you or to try to shoot content. Like to, to me, it, it sort of feels like uh, I don't know. It it doesn't feel good. It feels like I'm taking advantage of, you know what I mean? Like I don't want to share a moment with my kids via like an external. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just some some reason it doesn't feel good to me. And for other people, it might feel good and it might feel fine. Uh, but I don't like it for myself. Yeah, no, I agree. I felt the same way. How about having like how many kids do you have now? I have three. Three kids. Three at home. You're forty. How does it how does it feel to be where you are right now? Because like for example, I got I'm thirty one. I got a lot of friends who they got into their thirties and they're feeling kind of old, et cetera. You're out here running, you have three kids, you don't have a wrinkle anywhere. <laughs> like <laughs> like how's your body feel as you're getting older? Do you notice anything? Has anything felt like it has slowed down or how do you feel? Not really. Like I said, like I feel like I'm like 30. This is the best I've ever felt. And uh, a big part of it is the running. The running. Okay. The running has really, really just changed everything. Um, but strength-wise, 
I mean, everything is still the same, man. I think my I'm getting smarter, wiser, mm -hmm. you know, with with training. Just focus more on being more efficient and with my time. So yeah. when you when you're focused on being efficient with your time, it just it changes your approach. Shorter workout sessions. Shorter and more intense, yeah. How much shorter? And like, well, what does it kind of look like now? Well, back in the, when I had the campus, my gym, I would be in the gym for like three, four hours just fucking around. Yeah. Right? It probably was equivalent to like a, a, a two hour workout. Okay. Okay. But now, like when we have the kids, when they're out of school, we have to block out a, a spot for the kids club and it's two hour max. So we literally have to go 10 to 12 and then mm. knock it out. Um, so it has to be a lot more strategic and straight to the point. You uh, train with your wife? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. And my, my, my rule growing up was never to cupcake. <laughs> Cupcaking at the gym was like a no. <laughs> Hell no. Like I've never trained with a girl, a female. I was missing this term. Y'all both knew what cupcake meant. Yeah. But I, when you say cupcake, what do you mean? Cupcaking is just, you know, just. It's pussyfooting? Being a little, you <laughs> no, know, like with your woman at whipped. the gym. Yeah. Oh, pussy whipped? Yeah. Oh. Oh, that yeah, must be. It. I mean, that's a you know they're they're cousins of each other, but yeah, <laughs> like I don't know. You know what it's like Cupcaking. when yeah, when you have like your your gym buddy, your your gym bro friend, and then all of a sudden they get a girlfriend and they're working out with their girlfriend, mm -hmm. and it's like, dude, I thought we were gonna lift fucking heavy today, and they're like, uh, yeah, I'm gonna go over here and uh, <laughs> so you're doing like do, a, do some Smith machine squats with yeah, my girl. Say, hey, don't doing, disrespect the Smith. You doing hip thrusts? Thrust. I was trying to think of like a chick movement, like with like their you know like a. Yeah, the hip glute, thrusters. Glute day or there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We're gonna do hip. You thrusters. doing glute day? <laughs> I do glute day now. <laughs> for the fem, for the women in our audience, roast Andrew right now. Yeah, go ahead. Go to the comment section, roast this man. Hey, it's hard to like produce and then speak and think at the same time. <laughs> that, that was a good scenario, though. All <laughs> right, but like with a friend, the right? setup, like, right? Yeah. Like, are we training Thank today? You. No, I'm training with my girlfriend today. Like that, that, that's 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 a good example of cupcake. Mm -hmm. Like on an extreme level, you're like, bro, what the fuck happened to you? <laughs> But I go in there with my wife and I'm training her to be the best like spotter partner. Like I'm 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 training her to be a good partner. You know, I'm cupcake mm -hmm. cupcaking but it's benefiting. <laughs> it's bringing us closer. And she also, also trains hard, right? She does. Yeah. And you're also married. So yeah. it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it's still not the same as like training with one of you guys. Like I I can't take my forced reps to like true 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 failure because she cannot you know, right. She can't bring it up. Mm. Uh, what is uh? What are some things you learned from powerlifting? Like what do you, and what has it helped uh, in terms of bodybuilding? Because um, I know you did a handful of meets. Yeah, just strength is is never a weakness. Weakness is never a strength. That's what you're saying, right? It is. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so true. I like. I said it out loud one day. I was like, "Fuck, that shit is deep." <laughs> um. You need to get stronger. As a natural, if you're not getting stronger, your physique is not going to change over the years. At one okay. point in your life, you were, uh, yeah, you, I think at 15 or so, you said you were 95 pounds. I was like 95 pounds. When like, you started lifting. Mm -hmm. And then what, like, uh, was strength the key or was it bodybuilding or was it eating or kind of combination of? So I was playing basketball. So I was a little point guard at that weight, right? So I wanted to get faster. I wanted to jump higher. I wanted to be more explosive. And that's why I started lifting. Um, the weight, the muscle just, it was all performance. I was chasing performance. I wanted to get stronger and the muscle just came along with it. Mm. And I was able, I was lucky, lucky enough to be able to eat, you know, eating has never been a problem for me. I ate too much, but then basketball and being active just kind of kept my body composition yeah. in a good place. Mm. I never got fat and then lifting, you know, just built the muscle. That's a cheat code though. Like it's, it's, it's. You know, right now you're finding it easier to stay lean because you also have running. You know, if, if you're a lifter, and let's say you've put in a few years in the tank in terms of lifting, but you want to be leaner, find yourself a cardiovascular activity that you enjoy. You know, like you both have running, like I have grappling, and it's it, it's not difficult to stay lean at all. Fucking Andrew's almost at single digit body fat. He's at 12 or le probably 12 to 12% 12. 12 body mm -hmm. fat. And he's like, it's not, it, is it difficult for you to stay lean? No, no. I'm, I'm, it, just like what you said earlier, like when you started running, you started eating more. Um, I don't know if I've been eating more, but like, I'm not stressed about food at all. You know, like we, we were talking about like Thanksgiving and the holidays and stuff. And like, yeah, if I want to have a little bit of something that I normally wouldn't, like if I was tracking or something, like I would just be like, nope, I'm tracking. I can't touch any of that. Now it's like, yeah, dude, I, I trained pretty hard this week, but like it wasn't difficult on me. You know what I mean? Like it was fun. 
And so now I'm like, oh shit, yeah, let's let's go ahead and have a little bit of something here and there. And it doesn't do anything other than yeah, make you nice and veiny the yeah. next day. <laughs> Which is always fun. When you were uh, more active with bodybuilding, did you do cardio? Only when I was prepping. And did you kind of hate it? Yeah. Stairmaster. Mm. Do you feel like there's a big difference between like specific bodybuilding cardio training versus running? Or could you utilize running as a form of cardio for bodybuilding, you think? Asking me that today, I don't think there should be a difference. You know, back 10 years ago, I would answer you completely different. Mm. I think... I think the intensity has to be uh, strategic. You know, I'm not going to be running if I if I was started if I started contest prep now. I would strategically choose my my my, my mileage, um, the intensity, because I would have to prioritize that that leg day, right? Like to be able to maintain the muscle, right? Uh, I think, and then I would have to eat a lot more, which would be a good problem. Mm. You know. There's also the skill. Like you, you now have the skill of running. But like for someone new, Mark, and both you, both of you guys had to take some time to learn how to run and have it become an efficient type of thing. Because if it, you know, I'm assuming when you started running, your recovery was harder than it is now. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, the aches, man. Like my, the, just the wear and tear. You just carrying bodybuilder like muscle. You know, being 20, 30 pounds heavier than the average person. Like you have to focus on technique or you're going to run into those, those, <laughs> that wear and tear pain, mm -hmm. knees, freaking feet, you know? So it had to be strategic. I had to learn how to run or I it wasn't going to, I wasn't going to progress. And for bodybuilding, like they, you know, a bodybuilder or somebody that isn't proficient or hasn't really learned how to run yet. Uh, Stairmaster is a great option. Treadmill on an incline is a great option. And the reason those things are such great options is it's a really controllable variable. You know, you don't have to really worry so much about like rolling your ankle when you're doing Stairmaster. Uh, there's a lot of shit that can happen on a run, even for an experienced runner. Even somebody that's been running for a long time, they could go out on a run one day and just all of a sudden shit hurts. They all of a sudden they're, they have tons and tons of shin pain. And maybe even the uh, fractures are pretty common amongst people that run often. So... I do think that running could be great for some bodybuilders to utilize, um, but you'd have to do it strategically. You'd have to kind of plan it out and you got to kind of think about it more. When you said you would plan it out strategically, what do you mean exactly? Would you just try to say like, I'm going to go do like a 20 minute run and it's going to be, you know, my heart rate's going to be X for the whole run or something like that? Uh, it would probably be me chasing zone two, you know, being a zone two, um, yeah, and then just the the miles total for the week, calories burned. You know, seeing how many calories I burned for the, throughout the week, mm. and because uh, I do track cardio calories burned, like even for my clients, I prescribe calories burned over duration. Oh, that's interesting because yeah. a lot of people uh, don't like calories burned, but yeah. you've utilized that with success. Yeah, oh yeah, it's just if you're you're working with a client, it's just you're just able to track more. Um, Numbers, right? right? So, like, because 30 minutes on the Stairmaster versus 30 minutes on the uh, elliptical, it's going to vary based on the intensity. So, if you're telling them 300 calories, 400 calories, the, it, it's going to be more, it's going to be easier for you to track and them to track. Does that help gamify it a little bit, you think? Does that maybe help some of your clients get their cardio in? Oh, yeah. I think it's fun for them. They turn on their Apple Watch. I think it would help know? me. Like, yeah. if someone's like, yeah, you, okay, you burn 300 calories, now you get... 250 calories of food and you still are a net down, you know, 50 calories. Yeah. I, I think it's fun for them. They, they see it. They get to, you know, be all cute with their Apple Watch and right. start it and like, you know. They get to cupcake it. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, for, for the people that are, you know, you're, you're probably thinking, oh, but the calories burned are wrong. Even though they're wrong, it's consistent. Yeah. You know, it's like if you're tracking with your Apple Watch – that tracking, the way it tracks those calories is going to be the same. So for you as the coach, it's going to be a consistent measure and for them as a client, even though exactly. let's say they actually burned 300, yeah. rather watch this 400, it's still consistent. Exactly. Yeah. So. People get too crazy about it. Like, oh, it's not accurate. Like it's something, mm -hmm. something is better than nothing. How do you, uh, how do you help, you know, someone that's maybe not, you know, uh, so entangled in bodybuilding? How do you help kind of more average person. I'm sure you've had a lot of clients that are, um, you know, maybe not actively pursuing, you know, getting on stage for bodybuilding. That's the majority of my clients anyway. 
Now, how do you help some of these individuals who are like maybe kind of starting almost at square one and they just, their relationship with food and so forth is just not great? I start them on higher calories. So their deficit will be, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to assume that they're trying to lose weight, right? Try to get lean, get better shape. Somebody's, let's just say they're 40 pounds overweight mm -hmm. and they're coming to you. You're going to suggest more calories. I'm always going to prescribe higher calories. The higher, the better. You know, if we have to pull calories later, it's better. You know, for someone like that with, that's going to have more cravings, that they're, I'm going to keep their fat a little higher um, just to make them feel better and then ease that deficit in a lot, a lot more than somebody else. And then what kind of, uh, what, in what way are you going to maybe like box them in a little bit? Cause they got to be, at some point they got to get rid of some of those other habits, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, as long as the deficit is there, I mean, if they see the scale moving, they're going to be motivated, right? This small wins. If they see the scale move, you know, two weeks in a row, they're going to, they're going to stick to it. And then they're going to see that they're eating a good amount of food and they're not super restricted and they're going to it's going to be a lot easier for them mentally. Do you have to kind of talk them through it and say, hey, we're going to start you off a little bit more calories? And you, you know, week one, week two, you might actually gain a little bit of weight. Usually they don't. Okay. Usually it just starts dropping. Because they probably they don't up. have any idea what their calories are anyway. Yeah, they don't. Right? So you're going to give them a good amount of food is what you're saying. Yeah. And then from there, you're going to strategically pull whatever you need to pull. Mm -hmm. I think that everyone's going to perform better on higher carbs. I mean, higher calories, period. Um, if you can consistently see fat loss and keeping your calories high, it's going to be that much more successful mm. than crash, you know, just <laughs> getting super aggressive crash dieting. Do you suggest that they eat, uh, like natural foods or, or do you, because I know because you're tracking, you're allowing for, there's an allotment for, you know, other things that come in there. Are you saying, uh, Hey, like. Uh, primarily stick to meat and fruit and vegetables and so forth, or is it? Usually, I mean, how I describe it, how I instruct it is going to be different for each client, right? You know, if someone's been around, you know, the fitness game, I'm like, you want to stick to your bro foods, right? Like what you think is healthy, 75 to 80% of that, of your, 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 your nutrition should be that. And then the remaining 20, 25% could be fun foods that you enjoy that keep you sane. Mm. So... But yeah, micronutrient dense foods, like as a whole, you need to be chasing overall health. You don't want to be eating just bullshit all day to get lean, you know, if you want to stay healthy. It also seems that people learn their lesson pretty quickly. When like if you're tracking and you're like, oh, I could eat whatever. And then you actually do that. You learn your lesson like, oh, I'm hungry. Oh, mm -hmm. like midday, I'm fucking hungry. Well, you shouldn't eat fucking shit for all your calories. Maybe you'll, <laughs> yeah. right? It's like. You Find can have something that has more volume. Exactly. Yeah. You, you, you learn that well, at least most people get the hang of the idea of like, okay, I can't actually, even though technically I can eat shit for all my calories, I don't feel good doing that. You know? It is an interesting thing. Like if you were to just tell somebody, uh, go to In-N-Out and eat a double-double three times a day, they would be like, oh, that's pretty cool. But I guarantee you, not always, <laughs> but I guarantee you if someone did that for – you know, three days, four days, five days, there are probably other calories would probably start to come down. Mm. It's because they're having something that they, especially if they really like that, if they really enjoy that, right? Um, so I think, you know, having, you know, playing the longer game, I think really makes a lot of sense. And you're mentioning like a, a cheat meal or cheat day. I think that makes a lot of sense because, you know, for some people, it's just like, how can I make it to the next? <laughs> how do I make it to the next it's just easier, right? Like if, if I know, if I know that we're doing a certain drill or a certain technique in say like jujitsu, or we're doing a certain exercise in the gym and it's really, really hard. Well, man, it really sucks to not know like how long is this going to last for? Mm. Um, if I said, Hey, just run as fast as you can. If I told someone just run as fast as you can. Well, usually there would be another question there, right? Like, well, for how far, <laughs> how long do you want me to do that for? Because, if I literally just take off and try to run as fast as I can, it's going to be like eight seconds later that I'm starting to feel like I'm going to die. So you have to, you know, kind of plan it out with a little bit more uh, strategy. I think even in the military, um, when they do buds, they say, because I guess the, when they do buds, they have to feed you. Um, they have to feed you three times a day minimum. 
And so the guys would tell each other, just make it to the next meal. Just make it to the next meal. We don't know what's happening. We don't know how long it's going to go on for, but it literally can only go on for so long because we have to be fed three, three times a day. That's rough. Uh, if you do have a client that, um, I guess they are trying to go on a cut or they're trying to lose weight, but a little bit more aggressively, but they're just like really hungry all the time. Do you have any foods or like killing hunger hacks that you've you utilized over the years for clients that has actually like shown to have a lot of benefit and help? A lot of times those clients are just what Nsimo was saying was just eating bullshit, you know, like no volume, low volume foods. And, and I just recommend, you know, actual veggies, fruits, you know, and, and that usually does a trick. Mm-hmm. Um, but I mean, that's usually it is their, their, their food source choices. There's no volume. They're just hungry because they're not eating any volume mm-hmm. yeah. or having enough water. It's probably helpful, you know, that your wife uh, was so competitive as well. Um, do you guys kind of get way into cooking or, or have you guys gotten way into cooking where there's like meal prep and you're cooking, you know, voluminous foods that, uh, you know, aren't containing tons of calories? Um, no, we actually don't cook that much. Um, everything is for convenience, man. Like I'm king of the, the microwave. Mm-hmm. So what do you mean? You, you, what do you mean? We don't cook that much. Yeah, like, this is good to hear because, like, a lot of people that are healthy, you know, are usually promoting that. Like, I always tell people, like, hey, I think the most powerful thing you can do is cook for yourself, you know, learn how to kind of do some of that. But uh, what are you guys doing in your household over there? We haven't meal prepped in, like, a decade. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I love it. It's one meal at a time. It's literally, we're that flexible uh, that we we don't really plan it out, man. It's just, like, whatever we have in the fridge, we'll we'll... we'll do it. We'll do it. This Rice. Is, this sounds like real freedom you got going on over here. It is. It just made me realize how flexible we are. It's like we don't think about the food that much. It's just numbers. And then at this point, they're like, for the very first time that we've ever been, we, we've been married. This is the first. She's in a surplus, dude. This is the first time she's been in a surplus? Besides when she's pregnant. Whoa. Like, like purposely. Yeah. Like she's in a gaining phase and her calories are, she, it's, it's, it's. Pretty high. I think. Hey, you like can a, tell us the truth. It's just three of us here. <laughs> Do you she, like when she gains a little weight? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, all right. The sexiest a woman is when they're like a bikini girl. The best they look. <laughs> the best they look is. Can uh, I get an amen, everybody? <laughs> when they're pregnant. <laughs> oh shit. Because <laughs> by default they have to eat a little bit more. You know. I loved it when my wife was pregnant. It was great. <laughs> But <laughs> chase her around a little bit more. Yeah. It's just the, the pheromone. I don't know what it is. But it's Well, their the, hormones get kicked in pretty good when they're And then we, we <laughs> smell it. Yeah, they do. <laughs> <laughs> All three of you guys have experienced this. I've yet to experience this. This it's, sounds awesome. It's, it's a small window. It's only for yeah. like a couple of weeks, but it works pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they get, they get pretty fired up. <laughs> <laughs> Glad to hear. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. You can't get her pregnant any further. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the good news. Yeah, oh, but there's one already in the the oven. Mm-hmm. That's right. Mm-hmm. Afterwards, though, you got to be careful. <laughs> what? Super fertile, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, big time. Hmm. Also, yeah. good to know. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's great that you guys haven't meal prepped in so long. Yeah. Uh, what about with clients? Do you try to? It seems like you're trying not to give your clients like too many rules. It seems like you're allowing them to try to breathe and kind of learn. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that's what I was telling you earlier is like mm-hmm. I, I, my whole goal is just to simplify everything. And, right. And like I'm not – my coaching is so simple that like I think I need to charge less because it's so easy for me. It's right. easy and simple, but I produce results. Like the peop- my, my clients that do have a before and after because they stuck, they, they stuck to it. And, and we're consistent. Their 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 transformations are amazing. And they're, they're and you ask them how much they ate or how much cardio they did. It's just it's it's not the norm. It's not the standard where you're used to. Sounds like you're not overly like blown away by any one thing. Mm-hmm. It's like I just I'm going to need you to be consistent over a period of time. So we're not the calories in the in the meal that you just ate. While it is important, it's not anything we need to really worry about too much. And the calories that you had over the course of the last three days, kind of same thing, the last week and so on. But over the course of the month, we need this to kind of work out in this way. When you're trying to lose weight, the scale should be going down. 
Um, but again, what you're what you pointed out earlier is like we probably want weight loss on the highest caloric amount possible. Mm-hmm. So you might have to take the calories up. You might have to take calories down. Take the calories up. Take the calories down. You might have to keep moving it around. No, usually. Usually when I work with a client, say for six months, I probably make like two adjustments. Mm. A, if you're with a good coach, they shouldn't be making crazy adjustments. You don't need weekly adjustments, no, dog. No, <laughs> you don't. Like if your coach is adjusting like on the weekly, you're 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 with the wrong coach. Because mm. you can, there's no magical set macros or calorie amount. It's, it's a good like ballpark place that you are going to place your client based on, you know, their stats, their activity, their, you know, frequency in the gym. I can nail it pretty much nine out of 10 times where they're going to be in a nice, is that me? Oh, Mm -hmm. I think so. Is that my stomach? It's still on our (laughs) (laughs) Um, But yeah, you shouldn't be having any crazy adjustments. Um, You know, one, the the cool thing that you say that is, I I agree with you, because like I've, I've worked with people too, where it's like, Three months go by, they're continuing to make progress, don't need to make any macro adjustments, mm. but people start to get uneasy. And one reason why there are coaches that'll make weekly calorie adjustments is because I personally think they want the clients to feel that they need them. Mm. I think that's the reason. Because it's like if your coach is like, okay, take the car, take the fats down by 10 grams, take the fats down by five, and increase your protein by 15 this week. Okay, this week. Add inc- half a scoop away to this shake. <laughs> it's like it, they make it seem like, oh, there's this magical <laughs> shit that you can't do without me. But you doing that with your clients and them seeing those results, then they feel empowered to be like, you know, Ray, I, I think I can do this on my own now. Mm-hmm. Right? That's a good thing. There's no fucking voodoo or magic that they feel like they need to do. But if their constant adjustments are going on, why? <laughs> yeah. Right? I'm teaching them how to fish. You know? Mm. And then, and that's why I said, like, sometimes I feel like I charge too much. Because it's so simple. <laughs> I simplify the shit out of it where they're like, oh, this is how it is. You know? And I, but, I, but they get results. Yeah. But that's just what I have in my own mind. I'm like, this is... So simple. There's, I'm not giving much, but it, it, I'm still giving a lot. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm teaching them how to fish. I didn't know that, uh, and Seema informed me, I didn't know you guys have had a little affair going on for so long. You say affair. <laughs> <laughs> I meant, yeah, yeah, yeah. Relationship. I meant, uh, let's see, uh, what's the other words? <laughs> now we go way back. You guys go way back, huh? Yeah. Remember Ape Man? Dude, yeah. Look at that guy. <clears throat> You were the first person to invite me down to Trainer. like a gym to train. You know what I mean? I saw the pot- was, I saw the potential in you. I appreciate <laughs> it, man. I still had a, a bit of a hairline. Nice. It's oh crazy. yeah, look at all that hair. Was this 2015? 2014, late 2014 or 2015? Ah, yeah, 2015. You would make a great bodybuilder in Seattle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I guess I would. I guess I would. Look I amazing! Know. You look amazing right there. Ten pounds makes a big difference. That's me at 240. 10 pounds lighter? Yeah, that's me at 240. That's amazing. (laughs) That's incredible. You're 250 now? I'm 250, yeah. But you see more at 240. That's that's why I look so much bigger, but I'm just like leaner. What about, yeah, I was going to say, where where was your body fat percentage in this video? Oh, definitely like, uh, because this was right after I went to Worlds. So I was on the Worlds stage at around 230. And then I like, I was able to gain, I gained like 10 pounds a few weeks. So this was a few weeks after Worlds. So I'm probably still around... 7%, 7%, but the 240 I have right here, a lot of it is like carbs and water. Mm. Like if I, if I'm probably stage 230. Yeah. So here I'm probably around 8%, 7%. And currently right now I'm around uh, 10 per 10 or 11% body fat. So you've been maintaining that pretty easy, huh? Yeah, dude. With the activity. And jujitsu's made it super easy to like, cause like here I had to like, I had to fucking count fucking calories and be super diligent to be this lean and now like 250 has been super easy to hold for the past years because like for you with running and me with jujitsu it's just like i have i can eat because i'm expending calories you look pretty nuts right there (laughs) and like seeing you in person and seeing you train and when you're training and stuff like it always looks impressive but that would be neat to see in person (laughs) fucking amazing (laughs) You've seen me with the pump, though. Yeah, I know I have, I you have, know? I have, but I haven't seen you like that dialed in uh, leanness. Leanness wise. wise, yeah. But I did see you at full chub, which was pretty good too. <laughs> Saw me at two seventy two. Yeah, 
Do you guys train together now? We tr we train Once around the same time a lot, but we don't really do much together. Oh, um, tank. Yeah, we do. We do kind of different stuff. I guess we do a lot of stuff similar though, too. Yeah. Little yeah. little mixture. We like to kind of train all day. How about for you? Do you uh you know have like a planned time that you go to the gym? It sounds like you you were mentioning that uh, because you're you're bringing your kids mm -hmm. with you. That you have like designated uh, time at the gym. Yeah, this is like mo the most structured I've had my like fitness. Right? Do you like that? Does that help you? You think? Mm, I do it for the wife. You know, the ha happy wife, happy life. When it should be happy king, ha happy husband, happy <laughs> happy kingdom, happy Gilmore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so we're like ten, like ten. Dude. 10 in the morning because we take the kids to school too mm -hmm. so that's right after that we we come home we eat and then we head to the gym so it's around 10 10 to like 12 o'clock one o'clock sometimes your kids get to see you guys lift a little bit do you have any stuff at home or uh your kids probably weren't old enough to see the gym that you owned they uh, our oldest riley was mm. um but they they see it they see it on uh social media and stuff like that yeah but, but they when they go to the kids club they see they see the gym and is it three girls or uh, two girls and my little guy he's five nice mm. damn that's dope what do you think is uh like other than i guess we'll say consistency uh some of the, like the newer people when they're trying to gain muscle what are some of the mistakes that they're making that you've noticed they're not tracking their food they think they can dirty bulk and you know get enough food <laughs> um where they just get they just get unnecessary, like fluffy, like fat when they don't need to. I'm a big fan of dirty bulking. Like you can get, I think every, every new lifter should dirty bulk a couple times and just feel it. Yeah. Feel how strong you get, you know, how fat you get and you jump out of the shower. You don't even want to look at yourself. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's a good dirty bulk. You could jump out of the shower. You're like, fuck, where's my towel? <laughs> That's how I used to be. I mean, I uh, it used to be like shit. I'm fat as fuck. <laughs> like, I, but then you you go to the gym hoodie. You know, you just like covered up, big sweats. But then you would fuck shit up. Yeah, yeah. You go to pick up a forty five pound plate and it feels like a frisbee, like a little ten. And you're yeah, like, you're what like, is this, this? A quarter? Feels <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that's sick. But I think the older you get, the less time you have to to be cutting like forty pounds of fat. Mm. Mm. So then what would you say, like, if, if a kid came up to you and was like, oh, I want to do the gallon of chocolate milk like Sam Solik, it seems to be working for him. I'm all for it. Really? Like, I haven't really looked into him that much, but I, I just heard how, how much the kid's blowing up. But, mm -hmm. like, the, how he's eating is how I ate when I was a kid. Fucking peanut butter jelly sandwiches, like, whole milk, no fucking almond milk. <laughs> like, everything was calories. I didn't really think about it so oh, much. milk. Yeah. <laughs> Not milk, bro. Seriously. <laughs> God. It was real milk, whole milk, you yeah. know, Not the hippie almond milk. Like I'm all for that when you're, you're, you're trying to save your calories, but like food is just food, man. It was like Marie Callender's pot pies, like, <laughs> uh, hot pockets. Like I couldn't even, I didn't never even had a protein shake cause I couldn't afford it. My dad was like, what the fuck? I'm not going to buy you a, a tub of protein for $30. It was like muscle milk. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I got it from food. Like I never took any supplements because I didn't have any money. My dad wouldn't buy it. You, we wouldn't spend the money on supplement because he didn't understand it. Dude, that old school muscle milk back in the day uh, on the side of the can, it said like eat fat, burn fat. And it was like had MCT oil in it or whatever. Huh. But their, wow. that fucking powder was so good. Mm -hmm. It was so incredible. The uh, original muscle milk was like just unbelievable. You open up the container and like all of it was like settled to the bottom. You were like, because <laughs> you had this giant container and then yeah. it would like all be like stuffed down towards the bottom. But the uh, the bottle was like really heavy because of all the fat that was in there. Sick. You open it up and just the smell of it. It was, I don't know what the hell was in that product, right. but it was amazing. And it was kind of funny because it was supposedly sp supposed to be like a low carb kind of thing, mm. but it was like high fat, moderate carbs <laughs> and like moderate protein. It had like, a pretty good amount of carbs in there too. It tastes so good though. Yeah, it was good. Oh, the fat. Yeah, you could try some of that mind bullet tea if you want. 
when you actually, by the way, how's the? Do you, do you feel that shit? I'm lit. How do you? <laughs> I've been lit. <laughs> Yay! How quick did you feel it? Like real quick. Oh, really? <laughs> I told you I don't smoke. Yeah. Right? yeah. I don't smoke because I'm super OCD, a big thinker. Like the last time I ate some gummies, you know what I did? Uh -oh. Fucking timed it. I thought you were gonna say you got like paranoid or something. Mm -hmm. No, I do get kind of paranoid, but but I timed it. I turn on the timer. I'm like, let me see the stages of when I feel it. Like that's how much I think. And like, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I don't relax. Uh, you know, I okay. don't like, I don't, I don't really need to be high, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. drinking. I drink beer. Like I love brew. I like, I love good craft beer. Okay. But it's like, it doesn't last that long and it doesn't like, there's no psychoactive properties to that, like that THC point where yeah. I'm like, but I got a, uh, a serious question to ask you when you were talking about eating the way you did as a kid, mm -hmm. do you think, like, do you think that that is a, uh, do you think you can, do you think like training, you can build like kind of, of a resilience to a certain amount of like calories? Cause you mentioned for yourself that you're on like a 3,500 calorie, you, you eat like 3,500 calories right now. And uh, that sounds like an enormous amount for people that, you know, maybe aren't paying attention or don't understand bodybuilding well. Sounds like a lot for a guy that weighs 170 or 160. 160. Sounds like a lot for a guy that weighs 160. But I, I know it sounds kind of weird, but do you think you can kind of, I guess you have, you have trained yourself to be able to handle this, this amount of calories. But do you think even for, you know, a younger person growing up and kind of consuming a little bit of whatever, that that's probably kind of healthy in a way because you train your body to get used to some of these foods? I think so. Yeah, I, I think it, it's it's the same thing as like when you deprive yourself of food sources and then you bi build up those, you have deficiencies, but you get almost uh, like, you know, people are like, I'm, I'm gluten intolerant because right. I haven't had fucking bread in like two years. Right. You know, I think it's it goes the same way, but, the, you know, the opposite way where you can build up like how bulletproof your stomach is because you eat so much shit. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's real. It becomes bulletproof. Like I... My stomach is bulletproof. Like I can eat. I'm not picky. I eat big portions to the point where I I, I can, yeah, I can say like I'm full as fuck. Like, <laughs> right. You get that insta shit, you know? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you can eat whatever. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, I think it does. I think you kind of train your your stomach to be that way. I guess I never thought about it that way. But you mentioned gluten. I'm also thinking like lactose. I know a lot yeah, of people stopped drinking milk and now they can't go near it. They see a thing of milk and they fart. Yeah, <laughs> I think that's what happens to a lot of these competitors, especially bikini competitors, where they're super limited, more than, you know, a, 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 a bodybuilder. Um, but you cut out food sources, and I think that's where it goes downhill. You know, you're, you're just like, you're, you're pretty much allergic. You build up those intolerances. Yeah, damn. So I think a successful prep is always keeping a variety of food, fitting in random little treats like a, like an ice cream, you mm -hmm. know. A little apple pie on Thanksgiving, a beer. <laughs> now yeah. I don't drink as much beer because of the running, though. That mm. makes me think because the hydration. Oh, I okay. feel I, I, I'm not hungover, but I don't feel the same. I don't want to run. Not you know, hundred percent. There's some people that say a little bit of beer can help with hydration. Mm. Who's what? <laughs> they, really? They have a little bit. I think. Uh, I think one of the guys we've had on the show before said that, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, I can't Was remember. Was it uh, who? Alan or uh, how do you say his name? Not uh, Alan Aragon. No, no um, not, not that. More recent, like. Uh, oh Jesus Christ! I'm forgetting his name. But uh, see, I'm I'm gangster when it comes to food, like just doing that kind of stuff. But like, no, I can't lie. Mark Allen. I think that might have been the person mm. that mentioned it. It dehydrates you. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, it will, <laughs> especially in large in large amounts. It will dehydrate you for sure. If you really think about it, it's like. You go and you go to a brewery and you have a couple beers, right? How many pisses do you take within that hour? Oh, yeah. You're just unloading and then you're not drinking any water to replace it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. You're going to feel like shit in like a couple hours. Let me ask you this, Ray. How do you feel generally like in, as far as stress is concerned? Because one thing I'm, I'm really digging about all the stuff you're saying is like you allow yourself some freedom. You're reasonable. You know, you'll drink some beer here and there. You ain't tripping about it, right? It doesn't seem like this stuff stresses you out much. And one thing I know is that when a lot of people, let's say that they try to, they're sticking to a specific diet. And then once they cave and have some cookies one day, 
it just, they feel like they failed and they're stressing for days and they feel like they could never die. And it's just, it stress fucks them up. How do you generally feel? It doesn't bother me. Cause I, I really look at food as just numbers. It's not, there's no morals, right? Like people, we, we've given food sources morals. Like there's good boy, bad boy. Mm -hmm. Like it, it's not the case. It's just like, shit, I wasted calories on, on this. Like the fat content was so much higher. You yeah. Know? That's, that's how I look at it. Yeah. So it like you, and when it comes to things like sleep, do you, when you drink, do you like keep it away from bed or whatever? Or do you just like, I'm having a beer. I'm going to go to sleep later. I ain't tripping about it. Cause some people, they really stress about how that affects their sleep. Oh yeah. It definitely affects your sleep, uh, but I don't let it stress me. I just make sure I hydrate more before I go to bed. Mm -hmm. Have a little bit of sodium. I, I, I do these electrolyte pills where I'll pop them before drinking, during drinking mm. and after. Okay. Uh, what, what are those pills? I get them on Amazon. It's just a good electrolyte. Like it has all the electrolytes and it's like, it's like 40 bucks. Man. Yeah. It's like, yeah. No, it's uh, it's funny you say that because uh, I had a lot, I have, I still have, you have friends that drink that hit me up trying to get um, electrolytes because they found that like I gifted them electrolytes and they were heavy drinkers and they're like, wow, mm -hmm. I'm not super hungover because mm -hmm. I'm actually like, I'm hydrated. So that is one thing. If you're someone who likes to drink, get your electrolytes in. It makes a big fucking difference. Yeah. When I do decide to drink or I know I'm going to drink, I'm like hydrating even more. Yeah. The, the night before. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Tell them what time you drink some wine. I'll have morning wine. Mm. Every now and then, not every day. I don't like to have it towards bed. So I like to keep it away from bed. And so I can just still enjoy my wine. I'll just have it in the morning. And just a glass. I'm not mm -hmm. getting like lit. Yeah. I can still do everything I need to do during the day. Come here, podcast. Did you have a glass this morning? I didn't have glass this morning. I'm just having tea. I've been substituting tea for coffee. Mm. When it comes to uh, somebody binging, uh, what do you usually try to recommend or how do you manage that? Because I think it's a big issue for a lot of people. Their calories need to be brought up. The deficit is too aggressive. Um, fitting in, you know, fun foods that they're craving or like if they're having cravings, you know, get MacGyver, MacGyver it and if you're craving a pizza, go make a, you know, a leaner pizza or lean cuisine. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're craving some fucking ice cream, go get like a halo top, <laughs> fit it in. The more you could fit in, the more successful you're going to be because you're mentally like satisfying that those little urges. Right. And you're going to be able to do the whole process for longer. Mm -hmm. It's going to be a lot more sustainable. See, he never said anything about fat free cheese. I'm just friend. saying he said leaner and fat free cheese happens to be leaner and yeah. you can make really good. Well, good you enough pizza. Do you fuck with fat free cheese? I used to, you know what? I'm in a deficit. You're in a deficit. Okay. <laughs> and he's the online coach. So I'll go with that. <laughs> I, Dude, I used to people. bring my cheese to like, <laughs> Oh shit. Fucking in and out. Like fat-free cheese. Oh, yeah. Really? Cause, cause and you go, sprinkle it on your burger, your fat-free yeah. cheese. They got slices, though. Yeah, they, like, they the got slices. slices. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Oh. It, I don't know what it actually is made out of because, like, on the uh, the, the wrapper, it says, like, like uh, something like cheese product. It doesn't say it's, like, like actual cheese. But I'm like, it has the flavor and it's cheese got the right product, color. Cheese product, TM. Yeah. <laughs> Tastes good enough. You remember Walden Farms? Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Did you do that Damn, when you were prepping? Been a minute. Oh, uh, no, I didn't use any Walden, but I should have. Actually, no, I think I did. I think I did. It had like yeah. honey mustard and uh, that. It tastes like shit. Syrup <laughs> and all kinds of stuff. You got to be really digging to like have this. <laughs> I remember. I liked the, it. The, I like the syrup one. Well, the syrup's I, good. The yeah. syrup, that's the only one that I use. That yeah, on some uh, some French toast. That shit was good. Or like the the ranch. That was nasty. Oh, I'm like, why the fuck's it called Walden Farms? Like, what farm is this? <laughs> <laughs> this mutant um, food yeah. that zero calories <laughs> makes no sense. Yeah. Yeah, oh there's my no god! Way. It's so oh, yeah, they ain't got no orchards over there at Walden Farms. Yeah, <laughs> you're like this is not natural at all. This is like yeah, this it's is all chemicals. Crazy, yeah, crazy chemicals. <laughs> um, what are what are some of your favorite things to uh, cheat with when you when you uh, have your fun day Sunday or however you say that? Mm -hmm. All you can eat sushi. You that's your favorite when i'm in a deficit that's what i crave it's like it's crazy because when i'm in a s surplus or i'm a little fatter than usual and my calories are up i don't crave sushi as much i crave mm. burgers burgers or sushi mm. i love sushi myself I love like real sushi yeah no california rolls or no no yeah I bento love, boxes love, yeah i love <laughs> I love real sushi. I like a bento box though too. <laughs> Cause I have friends who are like, Oh, I do sushi. And they order the bento box. I'm not ordering yeah. like 80 nigiri, 80 salmon nigiri pieces. And they're like, 
California rolls. I'm like, that's not sushi. Yeah, they're like, what is that? They want the rolls with the imitation crab and the mayo and whatever the fuck else is on there. Yeah. You don't think that's sushi? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Got it. Salmon or I either go salmon or tuna. Raw. Fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they don't have those weird rolls at fancy sushi places. Mm -hmm. They won't even sell them. Yeah. <laughs> You've been getting great sleep. You've been handling your nutrition. You've been working out in the gym. You may have been running and doing all the things that you believe are helping you get in better health, but you haven't gotten your blood work done. Mm -mm -mm. That's why we've partnered with Merrick Health because you could be doing all these things, but underneath the hood, there might be some deficiency or something small that could be the thing that moves you in the right direction. And without understanding what that is and how to change it with your nutrition or your supplementation, then you might just be spinning your wheels. So. Get your blood work done with Merrick Health. Work with one of their patient care coordinators so that they can give you the ideas of what you may need to optimize in terms of your supplementation or your nutrition or potentially hormone optimization. And they can help you move in the right direction by helping you from the inside out. Andrew, how can they do it? Yes, you guys got to head over to MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. That's M-A-R-E-K Health.com slash Power Project. And at checkout, enter promo code Power Project to save 10% off the Power Project panel, the Power Project checkup panel, or any individual lab that you select on their entire website. Again, MerrickHealth.com slash Power Project. Links in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Quick question about the, the your running, because you mentioned you did have some knee stuff, you did have some shin splints. What did you do to get rid of that? Because a lot of people who are new at running probably do deal with that. So what you did guys, you do? You guys changed the game for me. I think I was texting you when I was going through some of it, yeah. when, when you guys had uh, knees over toes over here, and I was, I was asking you some questions. But yeah, the sh uh, t uh, my shin splints, I did tib raises, mm -hmm. the, the reverse, uh, the sled pulls. Yeah. Um, what else did I do? There was one other one. Calf Some raises. Slant board. The slant board. Um, Sometimes even just a little time off makes a huge difference. Like even just a couple days. I don't even think I needed the time off. I just needed to strengthen weaknesses. Mm. You know, the hey, hips. Oh, the reverse. Uh, squ uh, oh, yeah. The reverse, reverse squats. Squat, yeah. Okay. Okay. My, my hips were just weak as fuck. And I was telling Mark how bodybuilders, do you remember everybody was always like when you did abs you're doing leg lifts or knee lifts like you would never fully extend your legs because you didn't want to engage your hip flexors you didn't want to take tension away from your abs and that's that's how i trained for years and i i just built up a, a weakness with my 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 hip flexors yeah sitting down all day too just they're weak as shit and that that led to like my lower back pain and like just all kinds of nagging pain mm -hmm. when running yeah and now you don't really deal with pain when running mm-hmm -mm. Nice. That's yeah. awesome. And that whole, when you guys first brought on knees over toes, like I was like, I was binging that content because I was in pain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's, that's usually when I, when I start to like work on things. Did uh, some of that information from Ben Patrick, did that change the way that you train period across the board with some of your bodybuilding even? I was already kind of on the same page with, with like even squats, like the whole knees over toes, like mm -hmm. we're designed to be that way. I never... I was always about full range of motion, but then when when he when I started listening to his content, I'm like, it all made sense, you know. You, if your knees can't go over your toes, you got you got a problem. Yeah, he he uh, drew attention to some really cool stuff, you know. When I started talking to Ben, and he started mentioning like the knees over toes, I heard, heard a lot of that stuff because uh, Charles Poliquin was is a mentor of mine as well as of Ben, and so I've definitely heard of the knees over toes stuff and was well aware of a lot of it, but. He just drew so much attention to that and also drew attention to, um, hey, we should be training some of this. You know, we should be training this way. But then if you also just think like knees over toes, you're like, okay, well, how do I apply knees over toes to like my elbow joint? How do I apply that to my shoulder joint? How do I apply that to my hip joint? You know, you start to just think about, oh, well, maybe I should just try to get more range of motion in my training in general, which I think is a great thing. And I think sometimes when you uh, body build or you, you know, do something for a really long time, uh, you can tend to, you know, get yourself in pain and you can kind of uh, start to lose mobility. But I thought what was really cool when we were training uh, this morning with Kenny, um, you were encouraging Kenny to, uh, to stick with uh, his ability to have some good athleticism. Kenny can still jump really well. He's got pretty good mobility. And I thought that was cool. You said that's going to separate your physique out from a lot of other people's, just uh, maintaining that uh, level of athleticism 
Did, was there anything specific that you did other than full range of motion work with bodybuilding uh, to keep some athleticism yourself? Or do you feel like you've lost, like you, you said that you played basketball when you were young. Um, do you feel like you're as athletic as when you were younger or did you get kind of muscle bound or tight or? Well, it's still there. Like, like my, my oldest daughter, she, she plays basketball and I've been kind of training her, coaching her since she was four and she's a beast, man. She's like, it's she, the talent is there. Um, so she picks up on it real, real quick, but messing with her, just moving around. It's like, she's like, daddy, you could play like who taught you this? You know, like it, it's like riding a bicycle, riding a bike. Like I've, I did it so much when I was younger. It was, it's just still engraved in me. The only thing is like my knee. For some reason, I can run 14, 15 miles, but basketball just flares it up real quick. Yeah, like it's tight. Stop and start. Lateral movement. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just cutting. That's, yeah. that's, that's where it changes the game for cardio. Basketball is mm. probably one of the best cardio, cardio you can do. It, it gets you. Besides like rolling on the ground, like I, I could not roll around on the ground for longer than like 30 seconds. Give it that's some time, just, you'd be That's able. lateral yeah. everything. You're moving yeah. your neck, everything. Like yeah. I would... Pinch nerve, boom, right, real quick. <laughs> I would have to really ease into that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For uh, yourself, do you mess around with some intermittent fasting? Oh, yeah. Especially when I'm cutting. When I'm in a de deficit, I like, I fast every day. And it's is, just. Is there any concern, because being a bodybuilder, is there any concern over losing muscle? I never had any. But, I mean, just thinking about it and all this, all this research showing about you know the protein synthesis and you know how how much how much protein like really really matters like per duration or your frequency so mm -hmm. i'm like it never really affected me to the point where it was obvious but i think i think i would if i was if i started a prep now i wouldn't fast as long as i usually did as yeah. long or at all as long so what what would what would you do? How long would you fast? I probably would go like fourteen hours at the most. Like I was doing like sixteen, twenty, twenty two. Okay. But like, yeah, especially if I kept running in. Yeah, I, I agree with that. By the way, I mean just, just even my own, you know, end of one studying on myself. I think that I do a little bit better, even if it's just like a uh, a fake fast. I call it, you know, an abbreviated fast. It's like. I'm not really eating anything. The calories are a lot lower. I don't eat uh, a whole lot of calories uh, in the morning, and I definitely don't eat a whole lot of calories during the day. But later on in the evening is when I will uh, get all, most of my nutrients in. But I'll still have in the morning, I'll still have like a protein shake or two or three eggs or something like that. It's a small amount of food, but it's still something. It's still something of substance just to kind of keep, keep the uh, protein muscle Synthesis uh, triggered. Mm -hmm. Try to stay jacked yeah. best I can. Do you coach uh, other coaches that coach people? I do. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> like, what's like advice for like uh, coaches that might be listening that are I don't know, just hoping to like pick your brain a little bit. You just got to be open minded, man. You can't. You have to continue to be open to learn. And like I always talk about research data, you know, there's new studies coming out every every day. Mm -hmm. You have to keep up with it. Like what I said two years ago might not be correct. So you have to call yourself out. You have to continue to evolve. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so not get stuck in some of the trends and stuff. Because that's what happens with a lot of coaches. That's what they do. Yeah. Have you seen anything that somebody's just like, dude, you need to let go of that? Freaking cutting sodium, cutting water. Mm. Like, what is your beard yeah. or natural? Like, you need fucking water and sodium. Mm. Yeah. I think it, I think a big deal about what you do, um, you know, listening to you talk to Kenny in the gym and just following what you've been doing for a long time, it sounds like you just have this, this longer play. You know, you got this longer. So Kenny was asking some questions in the gym, and you kind of kept referring to, like, well, it really just – if we have enough time, you know, you should be in really good shape for a bodybuilding show four to six weeks out so that there's less, there's less tricks, there's less intervention. Uh, we shouldn't have to be, and I, I view the same way with uh, prepping for your first powerlifting meet, uh, prepping for your first marathon. Like the prep for this, like people are trying to catch up from so far back 
uh, from years and years of maybe not ever really running. Mm-hmm. And now they're trying <clears throat> to pursue like, oh, I want to, <laughs> I want to run a marathon. And then they're like, I'm going to have this 20 week prep. And so like that 20 weeks sounds like a lot, but there's people that have been running their whole lives that those people are called marathon runners. <laughs> And you're trying to be a marathon finisher, Mm -hmm. which is a little bit different category. You need to just kind of take your time with it. But uh, in your pursuit of like bodybuilding and coaching all these people, I think that really makes a lot of sense is let's let's play the long game. You know, if somebody's losing 40 pounds for the first time, while it might be cool that they want to do a bodybuilding show, it might not be in their best interest. It might be like, hey, let's lose the weight. Let's see what you look like from there. Maybe we'll do a photo shoot or something like that. And then maybe we'll think about a 16-week plan from that point where you already look good. Or maybe you might even want to even take longer and bulk them back up the other way. Yeah, my mentality has definitely changed over the years. There's this patience, man, maturity. Everybody hates it. Mm -hmm. You're selling people patience. Mm -hmm. But then with that patience, sustainability comes along. Right. So it's any coach could starve you, get you lean. But are you going to be able to maintain it? That's that's what you're paying for with me. Yeah, and also, like comparatively, when you're if you're prepping somebody, what's the time difference of prep? Because you know a lot of people are thinking like, oh yeah, eight, twelve week preps. How long do you usually try to prep people for? I know it depends on the athlete. Depends. On yeah, how it just depends are, on how much weight they have to lose. Yeah, but I usually one to two pounds for a male, half a pound to a pound for a female. Mm-hmm. So just do the basic math there. If they send me a picture and like, guy needs to lose thirty pounds, then you know, 30 weeks yeah. at the least. Mm-hmm. How do you help people uh, reverse out of their show? Lately, it's been very fast. Remember back, probably the last show that you did, like the big thing was reversing out slow. Reverse dieting. Like yeah. super slow. Mm-hmm. Like now it's, you try to get there as quick as possible without getting too crazy. So like initially after the show, after the first you know, after that Saturday or on that Monday, you just nice little bump real quick to give you give you enough and then give it a little bit of time and then another bump, another bump. It's like a lot of people are scared to, to increase too fast because they don't want to have that fat. But like I think most people can handle it really quick because your performance increases really fast Yeah, with just a little little bump. And mm-hmm. a certain amount of fat is necessary. It's not like you're trying to maintain that leanness, mm-hmm. but you just don't want to get too fat. Yeah. I think if you can get out of the binge prone mode, you're golden. Mm-hmm. Right? You know that feeling. Like, especially if your coach dug you to the ground. <laughs> yeah. Dug you to the ground with cardio, carbs, locales. Like, you, it's hard to get out of there. And you did it, you did it for a prolonged period of time. It's like, mm-hmm. your metabolism is on the floor. It cannot handle a 500 calorie bump. Mm. It depends. So it really depends on how you got there first. How you're gonna get out? Yeah. How long did you have that gym uh, down in uh, Temecula? I opened what, like five years. Mm. Good while. Was it hard to let it go and just shift gears and do something different? Not really, actually. To be honest, like I wasn't a gym owner. You know, there's a lot of responsibility. Like, like I said, I pretty much ran it by myself. I had a little bit of help. Hired, you know, I hired employees, but it's just like I was paying them to do nothing to train and barely clean anything. You could only do so much. You know, right. for payroll. Um, so it was more, it was more of a chore for me. You know, I would get in there, train, use my office. Um, it was more just brand equity, you know, having people come over and, you know, just come visit. Like, and see, we came, you know, down, we shot content. It was yeah. more, it never really profited to the point where I was like, I got to keep this place. Mm-hmm. You know, I was just paying lease members, had enough members to pay the lease, you know, and, and a little bit, but that's it. I was just brand equity. Sounds like it's important to you to have like other shit going on in your life. Cause sometimes with that, uh, you know, uh, moving on from, uh, bodybuilding to running, um, you were a gym owner for some people, that's everything, but you have a family, you have kids. It sounds like you have a pretty good, sounds like you have a really good balance. And even with your own diet, it sounds like you have a really, really good balance. Does it feel that way? Oh yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think you have to. If you're going to be good at your fitness and your nutrition, everything else has to kind of match. Mm. Or you're, you're, you're losing. What's going on with this Wolverine tattoo? My favorite superhero, man, is the only... That's pretty amazing. Like, I was looking at it when we were training. I was like, that's really oh, that's detailed. Sick. 
Yeah, the tattoo artist I found, he's, he actually goes to my gym and made friends so with him. See if you maybe turn it yeah. towards the camera a little bit there. Right there is good. Why is Wolverine oh, your favorite? We can, we can interview Wolverine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why do you like Wolverine so much? Because like to get the superhero you like tattooed, that means you love Wolverine. Exactly. Yeah. Like, like uh, it was just growing up, like... I just, I was obsessed with them, man. I had like popsicle sticks in my hands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, Always like, get pencils and do it in school. <laughs> yeah. And then it all makes sense now is like, dude, like what was his superpower? Recovery. There you go. <laughs> that is golden for us now. Yeah. Recovery. You're going to get the surgery of the ananantium or whatever. Ananantium bones? Yeah. yeah. No. no. I wish. The that technology is, has to be good since we were kids, right? Like it's probably come a long way. It's totally safe now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but he didn't even want that shit, right? Like the True. whole the whole story right. was he was forced by that 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 dude. Yeah, Natty or not, <laughs> Natty or not, Kenny Ko. You, uh, you follow him? Yeah, yeah, he's in Vegas. I've run into him a couple mm -hmm. times. Oh, really? Yeah, elevation. Did he ask you the question? No, I made him. I was like, dude, you never asked me. Like. <laughs> He walked right past you? That's I fucked up. I, no, no, no. He just has never... He probably... It was kind of a, a diss. I'm like, mm -hmm. I looked that natural. You know? Right. Mm -hmm. But Kenny likes to ask people who he knows that they're... Like, if you look at when he ever asked people, <laughs> like, they're like, oh, no, of course I'm not. And mm -hmm. he always does. He he, love, he doesn't really ask people who actually are. Yeah. No, that's you know? true. That's yeah. true. Because then, like, I, I had my camera and I was, I was filming and I just turned it on us and I was like, hey, I'm going to... I just jumped in and gave him a surprise. Yeah. And I was like, Fuck, natty or not. I asked him if he was natty or not. And then he got into it. And then, yeah. So it was, uh, and he was kind of like, like shy about it. <laughs> like I thought he was going to be a little bit more, um, Kenny, you know, Yeah. but he tries. It's like a, a little bit. Yeah. Mm. It's not natural. <laughs> uh, it, what's his deal? Is he natural? <laughs> <laughs> no, he looks I mean, I think he used to use shit for a, a long lot. time, right? And then, like, I think, I don't know, more, like, nowadays, is he natural? I think he's mm. just, he says he's just on Tess. That's it. Oh, he's natural. That's basically <laughs> natural. But, but he has a company. Tess he's, is natural, just like vitamin D. It's a mm -hmm. hormone in the body, so there we go. Yep. Yeah. What is natty, by the way? What do you think? My definition of natty is just not taking anything um, anabolic, that that helps you build muscle. Hmm. I mean, if you want to if you want to talk like water, you know, there's a no, right, the list right, is right. like long as hell, right? Like, I can I can say that I'm lifetime natural that I've never taken a drug to help me build what I have. I think that's the key, fit, the main thing, right? You ever yeah. try like pro hormones or any of that kind of stuff? Mm -mm. No, I couldn't afford it. it. They were fucking crazy expensive when they first came out. Yeah, how expensive are we talking? I remember there was like, they sold like a kit. They sold like two things together mm -hmm. and it was like a hundred and something bucks. And I, I never bought it. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I don't know. Like that would be cool if it worked. But mm -hmm. I believe it or not, there was a time where I was natural <laughs> in my uh, life. Yeah, there know. was a time. Yeah. I swear to God. What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> well, what's, your, just, what's your definition of natural? Same? I would say, yeah, I would say it goes alongside what you're saying. Like, I think, uh, you know, we could just like split hairs over here all day long and be like, well, this guy tried this. And then this guy has this, uh, I mean, you can get into all kinds of stuff, you know, like in my brother's movie, they talked about how Tiger Woods had uh, LASIK eye surgery, you know? Okay. Well, uh, yeah, it's an enhancement. Um, but it's different than taking like anabolics. It's different than something that's, uh, I don't know. I just, I just view it as being like different. And I guess uh, my the main thing when I think about if someone is natural or not, they're usually talking about like somebody with their physique, physique or their um, or their strength prowess, you know. And uh, so I don't know. It's it's just like uh, I guess in other sports, though, it gets to be <laughs> the area gets to be really gray really fast because there are a lot of things that you could take that wouldn't be natural per se. Uh, I mean, there's there's a drug called DADA -A -A that uh, stops the Krebs cycle from stopping. So normally the, there's a Krebs cycle, and when it stops, uh, you may feel like you're out of energy. But if you take, <laughs> if you take something like this, that Krebs cycle will continue, and so it could give you a crazy unfair advantage 
in all kinds of different sports. And it's not banned. It's I don't know about that. Mm, okay. I don't think so. I don't think anyone really knows about it yet in that, those terms. But they it, will now. Yeah. Is it like a more on the peptide side? It's then? a yeah. It's okay. more of like a peptide type of thing. So you got to inject it. It's an injectable. Yeah. Yes. Mm, yeah. Hopefully it doesn't sting. Yeah. Well, the thing is, like, okay, when it comes to tests, test shuts down your. Let me ask you. Actually, let me ask you this. If you're on a really, really low dose of tests, does that shut down your own production of tests since it's exogenous? Because I don't think it would. I think no? if you're on a really mild amount, I don't think it would. Uh, I guess it would depend on how low you went. Mm -hmm. uh, the higher you go, the more impact it has negatively, the more likely it is to shut you down. But I think if you were to take, I don't really know, actually, to, to be honest with you, not, I'm thinking we're trying to really run it through my head. I do know that like testicular atrophy happens when you take more. Like, so if you, somebody takes two to 300 milligrams of testosterone, they're probably going to notice that their testicles shrunk mm. quite a bit. If somebody took like 50 milligrams a week or a hundred milligrams a week, I don't think that would happen. Gotcha. Now but I don't think you would have performance benefits either, really. That's what I was going to say. I think um, if it's at that low of a level, you might not get any of the benefits, you know, that you, that we, you know, kind of often know and talk about. That's a good so. question though. I want to, I want to mm -hmm. research that farther. I thought anytime you took any testosterone, it shuts off your natural production period. And that's that, that, that's what dictates how big your balls are. <laughs> right? No, like, no, um, I, 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 I have to agree with you guys in some way. Cause I don't really truly know. I just, kinda, I thought it was like an on and off switch. Me yeah. too. Like if, if you synthetically in, in you know, put testosterone in your, th your, your, your receptors just turn off for producing your natural test. I guess I know from my own balls. <laughs> I can go based off of those. <laughs> yeah. And uh, when I used to take more stuff, they would be uh, atrophied more <laughs> than they are now. <laughs> yeah, they look you great bigger now. balls, huh? <laughs> <laughs> there you go, everybody. <laughs> no. uh, real quick, though, because I do, I, I know for sure somebody, I was talking to another uh, a dad with his son, and they said that they actually gave him a little bit of testosterone to kind of like turn on his, um, uh, I guess, um, not natural. was like he like wasn't hitting puberty, but he was already The kid like, wasn't hitting puberty. Yeah, yeah. And he got like a super low dose and like that kind of like turned everything on. Mm. I Again, like and, and it, this isn't bro science. It wasn't thing like they did like, you know, in the back of a gym. It was at a doctor's office. You mm -hmm. know, like he, it's a procedure i guess we'll say mm. or protocol and so yeah I, I, that's yeah that's interesting right like they used it to tr click it on type of thing and yeah yeah but then as you age like when does it shut off like yeah it's Sleep is something we talk about all the time on the podcast because it's your biggest driver in terms of your health. And you sleep for a third of your life. So you want to make sure that your sleep is optimized and that you're taking every advantage to make that recovery period as strong and as effective as possible. That's why we've partnered with Eight Sleep Mattresses. It's the Tesla of beds. You can control the temperature of your side of the bed and your partner's side of the bed. And the cool thing is, over here at the podcast, we're all sweaty sleepers. Mm -hmm. I used to wake up in a puddle of my own sweat, and I can probably say the same for Andrew mm -hmm. and Mark. Mm -hmm. So that's a thing of the past because now my bed <laughs> is cool. I wake up every morning feeling refreshed, and there's so many things that this mattress does and tracks that it is just ridiculous. So check them out. Andrew, how can they get it? Yes, you guys got to head over to 8sleep.com slash power project. And when you do, you'll automatically receive $150 off of your order. Again, that's at 8sleep.com slash power project. Links in the description as well as the podcast show notes. Hmm. What has been your, uh, like, like, why have you chose to go natural or stay natural or like what's? I mean, I just look at it like at this point, like I made it this far, right? I built this physique. I built this amount of muscle. Why do it now? It's like I don't have a, a desire to compete. I don't want to be, you know, Mr. Olympia or, you know, get that pro card in the in the IFBB. So it's like I'm content with the the physique that I've built. Like why now? Why why would I jump on drugs now? I should have done it 10 years ago if I mm -hmm. when I was at my peak of like competing, right? And then like, what about when you were younger? Were you enticed? Like did you hear people talk about it and stuff? And were you like, man, I should – I was, be really cool I was track. fucking, I was fucking oblivious. Mm. Like I was looking at those magazines, looking at Jay Cutler and like, I thought, I, I thought I could train hard enough and look like him with muscle milk. I didn't know. I literally didn't know. Cause I would have trainers at the gym. Like 
15, 16, or like, or 18, when I built a good amount of muscle, like, you should compete. I'm like, I'm not big enough. Like, I didn't even know that there was weight classes. I, I just was training to be like Jay Cutler and those guys. I saw a video of well, Jay I didn't Cutler. Know. <clears throat> I saw a video of Jay Cutler yesterday. He was uh, up on a stage, and he's in, like, slacks, and he's in, like, a button-up shirt. Mm -hmm. And he just, like, he unbuttons the shirt. And you know that he's huge underneath the shirt, but you can't really tell, like, what you're dealing with. Like, you realize <laughs> this is, like, a superhuman in some fashion. You know, yeah. you recognize this is a very large individual. But to be perfectly honest, you can't tell if that individual's like, you know, really heavy with body fat or with muscle. And because the shirt's super baggy and the pants are super baggy too. And mm -hmm. he just like unbuttons his shirt and takes his, takes it mm -hmm. off. And it's just like, you're just like, what in the, what is this that I'm looking at? Mm -hmm. The guy looks superhuman. Unbelievable how much muscle he had. <laughs> and y'all got to remember, like, people are, when you say you're oblivious, there's someone who's like, bullshit. But this was a time before the internet when mm. you were a teenager. Like, there weren't fitness influencers making natty or not videos. Like, they, you, you could actually be oblivious at that point in time, right? I, I was. But that was a good thing for mm -hmm. you. Like, let me ask you this. Ignorance is bliss. Right? How, do, how would you, do you think it would have been different if you were young now? Do you think like mm. seeing, because you've seen what, you know, what's popular, what a lot of TikTokers are doing. A lot of young guys are hopping on test early. Because I even thought about this for myself. I don't know if I would have just been able to give myself enough time. I like, I wonder if I would have been enticed because now it just does seem extremely enticing mm. for young guys but they're not good. Some guys won't put in the time. Yeah. Right. It would be completely different. Yeah. I think my personality is, uh, kept me prone to just jumping into it. Mm -hmm. But I think, yeah, social media, the times, it just looks different. And he's just like that, that shortcut, it'd just be way more enticing. It's just more e accessible. Yeah. Right? Way more accessible. Everybody's on it. It used to be like, like literally I, I was, I didn't know that it was drugs making these guys that big. I thought it was just they're lifting heavy weight. And, you know, all I had was magazines to look at, mm -hmm. not YouTube or Instagram to watch these videos. So it's like ignorance was literally bliss. Yeah. I didn't know. But I, but it kept me, it didn't give me that like limitation, that roof. Like I was just mm -hmm. working and working and working, trying to get stronger, seeing how much weight these guys were benching or, or curling. I'm like, I can't do that yet. But when I, when I get there, maybe I'll look like him. You believed you could. Yeah. yeah. So even with, you know, even for somebody that's, <clears throat> uh, for somebody that's growing up today and you learn, you're like, oh, okay, fuck him. All the IFBB pros are on. Okay. Uh, all the uh, guys that compete in strongman are on pretty much, right? Like uh, maybe there's some, somebody out there who's not, but it's just assumed that these people are on. But once you start to learn about people that aren't on steroids or at least they're in tested federations and they say that they're not and uh, all we can do sometimes is take somebody's word, there are a lot of athletes that are absolutely fucking incredible that yeah. don't. And so the, the, the ugliness of the whole thing is like that we just kind of suppose that everyone's on it even when they say that they're not and you're like – well, that guy looks better than the guy that says that he's on. How is this possible, you know? But back to what you were saying about, like, limitations, I think either way, you know, we have to be careful about putting limitations on stuff because there are guys still squatting over a 1,000 pounds that, again, they compete in drug-tested federations. They say they're not on anything. We've had them on the show. We've talked to them. All I can do is believe them. I'm not trying to be gullible about it, but... Um, I don't think that all those people in those federations and all the people that um, say they're natural, I don't believe all of them are lying. So even if there's a few that are lying, there's obviously a lot that aren't and they're still doing extraordinary things. So I don't think it should ever be uh, something that we use as a limiting factor because we don't know. Like, but who knows how, who knows how big you could get? Like, have you ever really, tr have you, have you ever really tried to just get as big as possible to throw everything else aside and say, I, I'm going to be, I'm going to fucking be 212 pounds and see what happens. You know what I mean? I don't know. Like, you know, to really push. I've been in that, I've been in that stage. Yeah. I've been 200 pounds. Whoo. 199 at my height. Yeah. I was fast as fuck. <laughs> <laughs> but I was strong. Mm. Like. 275 on the incline barbell 
all the way down Damn. for like six. Nice. Wow. I couldn't do that without that fluff though. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm saying like. But as, you're big now though. Because I did that. You weigh 160 and you're fucking huge. It's just, it's an illusion. It's the muscle that I have on these little bones. Mm. Right. But it's like, I had my fair share of dirty bulking and being fat and moving weight, being covered up, you know, jumping out of the shower and covering up real quick because I wanted to see my fat ass. <laughs> <laughs> I did that. I did that. And I think that's why I said earlier, I think every kid should have a couple of those and see what you can do. Just like you said, just try to get as strong as possible with that, that, that fluff on you. Mm. Cause you take anybody, you put 20 pounds on me right now. I'm automatically going to push a little bit more weight. Oh yeah. Just, just the leverages, just the cushion, just the body weight. Right. Mm -hmm. I didn't build the strength. I just, you know, it's just body weight. But I think that's a big advantage if when you're, when you're a natural athlete, you need it. Now being 40, do you mm -hmm. like, cause you know, a lot of guys, when they get to a certain age, they're, you know, they're thinking about using TRT because of the natural decline that can happen. How do you feel? Do you feel that it's something that you might pull the trigger on or you're just going to wait and see? I'm proud of it. I'm proud to say that I don't need it yet. Mm -hmm. You know, at 40, I just turned 40 and this is the best I've ever felt, you know, the best body composition I've ever held, mm -hmm. the best I've felt libido wise, you know, a good indicator is what that morning wood. Yeah. Right. When I was staying lean, low calories, low fat, like a morning wood was like, fucking, <laughs> like, oh, it was scarce. But now, <laughs> now, now it's like, dude, it's like every morning. I'm glad you're bringing this up because we brought your wife out here. If she can. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, like I would tell her, I'm like, fuck, I had a wood this morning. Like when it first, when I first started feeling this, like, optimal like healthy feeling i'm yeah. like shit's weird like she knows like it, it's not normal well that's that was the norm for me yeah mm. but now at this point it's like this is a, like i said I, the best i've ever felt and i'm older i'm 40 you know and and i feel hormonally sound the best i've felt so you i'm think like that change in hormones was uh what, was that an adjustment uh of your calories or your or? definitely like, more calories just maintaining on more calories higher fat um just my cardiovascular health just being at its highest from the running. Mm. Um, yeah, better blood flow. Shit. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, there you go. Better blood flow. Like better That leads to everything. Better, better recovery, better pumps. Like, you have better pumps, like, in your bicep, what's going to happen down there? Mm. Little Raymond. You know? it's gonna, <laughs> he's going to get a better pump. Yeah. Everybody loves Raymond. Yeah. See? <laughs> that was a great pump. show. Yeah. <laughs> Yes. But it's like Little Raymond, big Raymond doesn't matter. <laughs> At this point, like I've made it this far. I don't need the test. Why am I gonna even think about it? I'm gonna I'm gonna wait till the doctor's like, all right, your your numbers are low and they're not they're they're on the decline and you're you're doing everything right. And, and then I'll jump on it. Cause I wanna continue to do what I do. Mm -hmm. And test your testosterone levels as a male is everything. Gotcha. You get your levels checked? I have not in a year or two since we moved to Vegas. Um, I was doing it every year, um, but I'm, I'm eager to go get a check. Like before that, I was like 400, 500, but I feel really good now. So it's like, I might just go get, get some uh, lab work and see where I'm at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Four or 500 is, that's great. And that was when, that was when I first started running too. Yeah. Mm. So I feel better now. So I'm eager to do it. The interesting thing too is like when when it was at 400, 500, were you feeling okay? Were you feeling good? I felt okay. You felt I didn't, okay. I didn't feel like now. Okay. Yeah. Like I said, those woods weren't there. Yeah. They weren't there like that. You know, I think the, the a really cool thing here is that it, what the things that you're mentioning are counterintuitive to a lot of people. And it would have been counterintuitive to me years ago. If you're like, I'm running, I'm feeling better in the gym, I have better recovery, along with lifting. I would be like, wait, what? Why, why the fuck are you running? <laughs> like, stop doing that shit. But it, it's really cool that like this is allowing you to be an overall better athlete, right? You're you're able to. I mean, yeah, you've gotten better at running, but now you can recover a little bit better in the gym because your heart rate's lower. Your your fitness is better overall. You're a healthier person because of that. And it's not like somebody has to run, but just improving your cardiovascular health can have these other downstream effects on your muscle gain, on your recovery, on your sleep. Mm. And your ability to eat more food, which we all want to do. 
Mm -hmm. And there's a difference between eating more food and needing more food. Yeah. Your, yeah. your body's going to tell you to eat more. Absolutely. So like right now I'm in this nice little mini lean bulk. I'm not as hungry and I'm just listening to my body. Yeah. Because I am purposely in a surplus. Mm. So, but a lot of people, yeah, you, they don't know the difference between wanting more food and needing more food. Uh, with some of the people that you coach, they ask you about performance enhancing drugs sometimes? Not really. Very scarcely. Mm. Um, they, the people that my clients that fall that, that sign up with me, they've been following me for years. So they know what I'm about and what mm. I stand for. So it's like, I never really get a random, you know, that asks me for that. No one's like, okay, but I mean, but really, Ray, come on. Mm -hmm. like, How much do I, I got to pay to get that <laughs> <kind> yeah. <of laughs> information? Yeah. For someone to ask that, they're just, they really don't know who I am. Yeah. Mm. Nice. Uh, if someone did ask you, if someone was like, Hey, you know, i been doing this for a while and I'm feel like I'm in pretty good shape and I want to, you know, take things to another level. Would you work with them or how, how would you? Probably not just because I would be, I wouldn't be uh, confident. I wouldn't be confident in, in coaching them. Yeah. You, know, you might them. say, uh, Hey, like if you need, you know, if you need more information on this stuff. I'm not the right coach for you. Probably. I'll refer them out to somebody. Yeah. Where can people find you? At the online coach, everything. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to getting in a run. It was an honor. It was an honor. Thank you. Strength is never weakness. Weakness is never strength. Catch you guys later. Bye. Ray said that he's 170 pounds and eats 450 grams of carbs a day. Isn't that wild? Mm -hmm. Well, let's ask, are carbs necessary for muscle growth and performance? We weigh in with a bunch of experts here. So click this episode so you can learn more about your carb intake.